Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. Today we're going to take a look at the SPTA rotary polisher designed for a three inch pad, but we're going to talk a little bit later about everything that this can handle, the different attachments that can be used with the tool. Unboxing reveals the polisher itself, a wrench to remove the backing plate, an extra set of carbon brushes, a handle, the warranty card, and instruction manual. The little unit has a 780 watt motor. It does have the M14 threads over here in the States. We're used to 5 8 but there are adapters to go either way, back and forth. The unit has a 6 speed variable speed dial, which gives you 1000 revs on the first speed setting and 5500 revs per minute on the sixth speed setting. The standard junior service cord, a stiff plastic cord you find on most polishers. This unit unfortunately does have the uh, locking power button on the side of the unit, which I do not like, and it also has the 14 millimeter threads. Let's get some dimensions on the unit. Dimensions important depending on what you're going to use the polisher for. 11 and a half inches the length of the polisher. From the base of the backing plate to the top of the polisher, 76.8 mils is the room you will have to squeeze in tight areas, and the width of the polisher is 56, just under 57 mils. This puts a smile on my face, weighing in at under 4 pounds. I'll throw a 5-inch backing plate on there and do some compounding to save my shoulders. Not designed for it, but it will take it. Time for the look inside segment where we look at the internals of the polisher and inspect the build. These plastic cap screws here can be removed to put the handle on either side depending what hands you use, but it also holds the plastic cover over the gear shroud. This reveals four Phillips head metal screws that we have to remove to take away the ring gear from the pinion gear. Now we can separate the ring gear from the pinion gear. That also reveals that cheap yellow grease that they often throw in these polishers. That's the first thing that I replace with some high temp axle grease. Four more Phillips head pan head screws and we'll be able to pull the casing away from the pinion gear and then slide out the armature. Sliding out the armature reveals some things I like to see. Directional fan keeping the unit cool. The coils or the field windings are coated. The laminates are nice and clean. That is uh, paramount to a nice balanced machine. That leads to the coils being epoxied where they connect to the commutator, very important. The bearings I would like to see higher quality where they have plastic caps to seal the bearings, but you know, they give and take, trying to save pennies here and there on some of these cheaper polishers. Let's pull off the cap. That will reveal some more field windings. And what I like to see, there's a nice thick epoxy over the edge of the windings here, so they can't vibrate. If any of these vibrate loose on the armature or right here, it will short the unit. Another thing I don't like is this button here can come close to the field windings when you power on the unit and can cause a short over time. To the other end of the polisher where all the electronics and the wiring is kept inside a casing that's held on by one Phillips head screw.
This reveals the carbon brushes, the copper casings that hold in the carbon brushes, and the spring coil that hold the brushes in against the commutator. The wiring is nice and clean. That's good to see. Some of these polishers do have messy wiring with pinch wires and also spade connectors that aren't shrink wrapped. So let me show you how to pull out the carbon brushes. Slide over the spring coil that will let you pull out the carbon brush from the copper casing and then just unplug the spade connector. The unit has a standard Chinese 8 amp power switch. The CPU is coated, which is nice, has a nice resin on there to fight off moisture and dust. Um, the connector of the power wires to the switches themselves are a little different. Some are just internally wired. This here you can remove with little tiny Phillips head screws. Let's get everything back together and we can talk about attachments, backing plates, and pads. There are many ways to set up your polisher to get the most out of it, from slapping on a 5-inch backing plate compounding your car, to using some of these smaller attachments to get in tight areas, polishing around door handles, getting in around the grill, front splitter, interior of your car if you have coated trim or black piano finish trim. Let me show you just a few examples of how to set up the polisher and ways you can use it. These rotary extension polishers may need the adapter depending if it's set up for 5 8 or just 14 mil. The adapters can be purchased to go both ways. With that attached, you can polish in under the door handles. You can take it inside the car and polish trim. Many, many ways to exploit the tool. Guys, I recommend a rotary, a full size for sure to do polishing a compound, do the cutting portion on your vehicle. One of these little guys here can take you a step further into your correction. And that brings us to the final thought segment of the video, the SPTA Mini Rotary Polisher. The price is right there, guys, even included in some of the kits where you get the polisher, backing plates, three different types of pads, extensions, polishes, compounds for under 140 bucks. It's right there, a, a bargain. The build, internals, everything I'm looking for. It doesn't mean it won't break down. Guys, it's the luck of the draw. I've had some economical polishers last for hundreds of corrections. I've had some more premier models. I've had two in one of the premier models break down during the busiest time of the season for me. So it really is um, the luck of the draw. What you really need to ask yourself is how much are you going to use the polisher during your time? What are you using it on? What size vehicle? Um, and really the type of imperfections you're going after on these vehicles. That should really 
uh, indicate what type of a polisher you want to pick up and how much you want to spend. So when it comes to the polisher and the rating on the channel for the price, for the build, and then for the versatility and everything it can do, this little guy is very impressive. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate. Brian from Apex Detail. I'll catch you in the next video.